Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's Highest Classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 30th March 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. Today's quote is to deny people their human rights is to deny their very humanity. So actually this is a quote which is mainly given by Nelson Mandela. So this quote you can use when you are writing any mains answer and even in your essay and even you can write this quote even in your ethics as well. So this quote it is very important regarding this human rights. So the first article that we are going to discuss about BEMSTIC. So in yesterday's lecture also we discussed about this BEMSTIC. So again there is one editorial which appeared in today's newspaper regarding this BEMSTIC. So this topic it is important from international relations which mainly comes under GS paper too. And this topic is exclusively important from your mains. So now let us try to discuss this topic in a very great detail. So if you are talking about this BIMSTIC, why it is in use? Okay. So if you see this BIMSTIC, so Sri Lanka which is mainly gearing up to host the fifth Bay of Bengal initiative for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation summit. Okay. So now as you all know, so this fifth Fifth BIMSTIC summit it is going to be held and this fifth BIMSTIC summit which is mainly chaired by Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka which is mainly hosting this fifth BIMSTIC summit. Okay. So if you are talking about this topic regarding this fifth summit of this Bay of Bengal initiative for multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation. So it is one of the special occasion which mainly makes this BIMSTIC leaders to reinforce their commitments and even that will be helpful for to coming up of some efforts regarding building this momentum of collaboration in the Bay of Bengal region and they will be focusing on security and as well as development for all. And this summit which mainly expected to build the required momentum of collaboration among the member states. So as you all know BIMSTIC mainly contains seven members. They include Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka and as well as Thailand. And this summit will be very much helpful for boosting of regional strategic and even economic integration between these seven members. And this BIMSTIC which also have a special significance for India regarding changing this mental map of the region. And actually you know that if you are talking about this foreign policy of India, so we have this neighborhood first policy and we have this act east policy as well. So these policies they are mainly focusing on especially regional integration and for this regional integration BIMSTIC is also very important for India. So if you are talking about area of importance, so especially this BIMSTIC which is mainly focusing on finalizing of this BIMSTIC charter. And they will be focusing on this BIMSTIC master plan for transport connectivity and they will be focusing on this BIMSTIC technology transfer facility and cooperation between diplomatic academies, training institutions etc. And they will be also focusing on this memorandum of application for future establishment of BIMSTIC centers. Okay, so these are the some important areas of uh, cooperation and even these are some important areas of importance between these countries of BIMSTIC. And this will be also very much helpful for economic and strategic significance of this Bay of Bengal because there is increasing of okay increasing of idea or emergence of idea that is Indo-Pacific region and there is shifting of power from Atlantic towards this Indo-Pacific Ocean that is mainly seen. So in this context also BIMSTIC is very important and this will be also helpful for growing economic, geopolitical and as well as security connections between western pacific and even indian ocean right and as you all know bay of bengal which is mainly evolving as the center of this indo pacific region so if we're talking about this bimstick which mainly acts as a bridge between these asian countries so bimstick which is having a very huge potential for developmental cooperation and it is also focusing on rapid change geopolitical calculus and actually this uh, Bay of Bengal which is having an unique position in this Indo-Pacific region as well. Right. So in this context we need to focus on security. We need to focus on counter-terrorism, piracy, intelligence sharing, cyber security, coastal security etc. So this will be helpful for regional integration of countries. And if you are talking about what is the importance of this BIMSTIC. 
so here author talked about three important things we are going to discuss them so the first one here is bimstick which is having a huge potential that will be helpful for geographical contiguity and even we will be having abundant natural and even human resources and we are having a very rich historical linkages and even cultural linkages for promoting of deeper cooperation in the region so for the deeper cooperation so these are very very important and this bimstick which mainly serves as a bridge between two major high growth centers of asia for example south asia and as well as southeast asia so this bimstick which is mainly acting as a bridge and in this bridge especially they are focusing on this connectivity so connectivity which is very much essential for developing of peace prosperous and sustainable way of bengal region so apart from that so bimstick need to address two dimensions of connectivity so we need to focus on national connectivity right and we need to focus on development of hard and soft infrastructure so these are the two important areas of concern and we need to focus on these two dimensions and in this way here we need to also focus on this bimstick secretariat so this bimstick secretariat which is having an important role and responsibility like it will coordinate it will monitors it will facilitates the implementation of this bimstick activities and programs and in this way so this bimstick secretariat which is going to agree or which is going to lend okay which is mainly going to focus on strengthening of institutional capacities of this bimstick secretariat okay so this is very very important so this is about this topic and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding criminal justice reform so in yesterday's lecture also we studied one article regarding this topic that is a brief introduction so now let us try to see analysis of this topic that is criminal justice so this article will be important regarding your gs paper to under polity so first let us try to see context and let us try to see some key features of the bill and later on we are going to see what will it benefits and what are the issues so in this way we are going to cover this topic in all dimensions so what are the thing now we are going to discuss that will be very important from your mains okay so now let us try to see context why it is a news so we are going to discuss about this criminal procedure identification bill 2022 So recently, so very recently, this Criminal Procedure Identification Bill 2022, so this bill which mainly introduced in Lok Sabha, but from the opposition party, so there is a strong opposition which is mainly seen. So first, let us try to understand some key features of this bill. So if you are talking about key features, the first one here is so this Criminal Procedure Identification Bill of 2022. so which mainly says that police and as well as prison officials they can collect they can retain they can analyze the physical and biological evidences so this also includes even iris scan and as well as retina so this is the first important provision and second one is according to the bill so this procedure which also apply to anybody who detained under this prevention detection law so under this uh, preventive detection law any person who is arrested so those persons data can also be collected under this bill and next one is according to this national crime record bureau so it mainly says that here police they can store physical and biological samples as well as signature handwriting data for at least 75 years so what are the data they are collecting that is physical data and biological data so they can store them for 75 years and according to this prisoners act of 1920 so this act which mainly set to be replaced by this criminal procedure identification bill of 2022 and if you are talking about officers in charge of this police stations or those not below the rank of head constable so they are also required to take measures and with the records of these measurements they are mainly kept uh, kept for reference for 75 years from the date of collection okay so here officers of charge of police stations and those should not be below the rank of this uh, head constable they can have the access to this data and this data can be stored for 75 years from the date of collection so what will be the benefits so earlier we have one act that is prisoners act of 1920 which mainly says that only fingerprints and as well as foot impressions that can be that can be collected and that can be saved but this bill which mainly expanded 
okay it includes even palm print impressions iris iris and as well as uh, here retina scans physical and biological samples here and we can also collect some bi biograph uh, so behavior attributes for example signature etc so in this way this will be very much easy for the completion of the process that is identification and that will be also helpful in the investigations in the criminal cases and this will also extends the individuals it seeks to cover which will ensure through investigations and that can be carried out by investigating suspended and as well as accused persons so this bill which is also covering even the people who will be arrested under this preventive detention act as well right and this will be also helpful for the, the collection of data for the suspected people and as well as even accused people so if we're talking about cause of concern so what are the concerns regarding this bill so first one is there is lack of clarity so several provisions are not defined in the bill okay so there are many provisions that are mainly not defined in the bill so it is one of cause of concern so it is not talking about uh, collection of measurements for the convicts and as well as other persons but the expression other persons it is not defined so the important thing here is the expression no, that is other uh, persons that is not defined in this bill and next one is it may also acts as a tool of harassment okay so this bill which mainly allows mainly to collect the data even in even regarding the behavioral aspects as well such that what happened so there might be a large case of misuse that can be seen and next one is here fear of misuse of provisions to the extent that the proposed bill brings a legal framework for the police surveillance using technology now polices they are going to use technology right so because of this there might be chances of misusing of this provisions of the bill and next one is right to be forgotten so the bill brings to focus the rights of prisoners and the right to be forgotten since this biometric data can be stored for 75 years okay so this data which is mainly can be stored by 75 years so the rights of prisoners and as well as rights of forgotten since the biometric data that can be stored for 75 years actually here if you're talking about this biological data so that mainly comes under this uh, right to privacy as well so as you all know in this case put to form a judgment supreme court said that so this right to privacy it is also one of the fundamental right which mainly comes under article 21 of our indian constitution right and now let us try to say next topic is regarding myanmar's continued suspension of democracy so why we need to talk about this myanmar so if you see india which is located here and india which is mainly sharing boundary with myanmar so because of this india which is mainly sharing with the boundary with other countries so if there is any political instability that is seen in those countries that will be also affecting relationship with india right so in that context we need to understand what will be the impact on india and what is the india stand on that issue so that will be important from your upsc point of view especially you can get questions in your interview and even in your mains regarding this topic actually this topic is important from your international relations which mainly comes under GS paper 2. So if you're talking about the map, so here you can see orange color is India and here we have Nepal, here we have Bhutan, here yellow color is Bangladesh and here green color is Myanmar. So here we are sharing boundary, okay, here we are sharing boundary with, here we are sharing boundary with Myanmar. So if you're talking about this article which is mainly focusing on India-Myanmar relations, so this will be important from our international relations. So if you see the see the context so why why this is in news or what is happening in this myanmar especially on march 27th onwards so myanmar commemorated its armored force day with russia as a guest of honor as a guest of honor here on this armored force day myanmar mainly invited russia here so myanmar was one of the few countries which came to moscow's defense after the invasion of ukraine as russia continues to be the major defense exporter to myanmar so as you all know russia which is one of the major uh, arms exporter so it is not only exporting arms to india but even to the myanmar here so this uh, myanmar which is mainly celebrating this armored force day so here on this day myanmar which mainly invited russia so now let us try to see what is the thing which is mainly going on this myanmar so actually what happened in 2021 February, so Myanmar's de facto leader that is Aung San Suu Kyi, you can see in this image, she is this Aung San Suu Kyi, she made arrested by the military coup, okay, 
and that led to overthrowing of democracy or uh, democratically elected government in Myanmar. And later on in June, Suki, go, uh, Suki goes on trail facing uh, charges widely seen as politically motivated. And if convicted, this 76 year old court uh, could mainly spend the rest of her life in a jail. So what happened in 2021 June, mainly she attended the trail, okay, and she attended the trail regarding some charges which is mainly imposed on her. And if they, if, uh, and if, uh, if she is convicted, then the rest of the life will be in jail. So in November, what happened, military authorities added some electoral fraud charges and they accused this Aung Song Suu Kyi mainly abused the power relating to this 2020 polls in mainly that made her party to win the elections. And later on in December, Suki mainly sentences to sentenced to two years of jail or the charges for inciting the dissent and as well as breaking this COVID-19 rules. And in January 2022, she is again sentenced to additional four more years on charges of illegal pollution and as well as import of walkie-talkies and as well as breaking of uh, this COVID-19 rules. Okay, so this is about the thing which is mainly going on in Myanmar. So what is happening on the ground? So actually military coup happened and this military continues to conduct operations in the different regions of the country and that led to violence and even the regions under this artillery attack, air strikes and even other physical forms of violence attacks that mainly seen in many states, many states of this uh, Myanmar. And if you're talking about what is this Myanmar-Russia relationship, so why Myanmar invited this Russia for this Armed Forces Day? So actually you know that here uh, Russia it is one of the major exporter of this arms to this Myanmar. So this Myanmar military junta seized the power last year on this February 1st, 2021. And now it mainly invited Russia, their true friend as a guest of honor for their armed, uh, armed forces day celebrations. And if you're talking about the defense exports to this uh, defense, ex defense imports or we can say like Russia's defense exports to this uh, Myanmar. So Russia continued to be the major defense exporter to Myanmar. So apart from that, actually Myanmar don't want to rely on one country. So apart from that, uh, Russia. So even China, it is also one of the major players of uh, arms for this Myanmar. And not only China, they will be also getting some arms from India, Pakistan, Serbia, Belarus, Ukraine, and even Republic of Korea, that is South Korea. Okay, so this is about some relationship between Myanmar and as well as Russia here. So this relationship between this Russia and as well as the Junta, which mainly seems to be the one, one area of cooperation between these two. And the Myanmar is also looking for their raw materials as currency, okay, which will work out for them as well as uh, Moscow. And next one here is this Myanmar, which mainly continue to run some Moscow agenda in international, uh, in this international for whenever it can by being sympathetic to Russia actions. So what happened even Myanmar, which is supporting Russia in number of multilateral form, forums as well. So what is the India stand? So if we are talking about India's stand, India's relationship with Myanmar, which has been predicted on maintaining the balance in its neighborhood. And actually we want to, we want to involve in this Myanmar, especially to counter this Chinese presence in this Myanmar. And recently India also urged Myanmar to end the violence and to implement Asian five point census. So this will be helpful for developing of proper relations. And not only India, but even US administration, which mainly want to put end the war in this Myanmar. Okay. And as well as even UK and as well as Canada, they implemented uh, sanctions against this high ranking members of Junta. And not only this, even United Nations Security Council also commended the uh, actions of this Junta. Okay. And New Zealand also suspended the political and as well as diplomatic ties with Myanmar in uh, 2021 and mainly continue to make sure that developmental programs that will function seamlessly in Myanmar. So this is about this topic and now it is time to see next topic. Title says Indian power projects replace Chinese ventures in Sri Lanka. So this topic it is about India Sri Lanka relations. Okay, so this topic it is important from international relations which mainly comes under GS paper too. So actually we said about India Sri Lanka relations and Sri Lanka it is in humanitarian crisis now an economic crisis and India which mainly providing some assistance for Sri Lanka and now India get in power projects in Sri Lanka. 
so this article is important from your international relations right so if you see context it mainly says that india will set up hybrid power projects in three islands okay in three islands of sri lanka so india will going to set up hybrid power projects and these will be replacing chinese venture which mainly cleared by colombo so actually these projects which already given for uh, china in january 2021 and now they are mainly cleared and now they are mainly given to india so if you see some details it mainly says that memorandum of understanding for the project was among those signed uh, those signed during this meeting between visiting external affairs minister okay and as well as sri lankan counterpart so actually this is the deal okay this is a memorandum of understanding which mainly signed between india and as well as sri lanka so it is a third indian energy project coming up in the sri lanka's east and as well as northern part right and these recent three agreements so two for adani group and one for national thermal power corporation sola venture right in january 2021 sri lanka's cabinet which mainly decided to award these projects for this chinese okay chinese firm that is sinos for h win and now they cancel and they are mainly given to india right not only these power projects but even we are mainly focusing to come up with maritime rescue coordination center right it mainly includes a bharat electronics and it is uh, like a 6 million dollars indian grant grant it is nothing but gift and india also helps to develop uh, fisheries fisheries harbors in point pedro gurunagar and as well as plasai in the northern province and even we are going to support schools in the southern galle district with computer labs and india also came up with extending of grant for sri lanka's unique digital identity project as well so these are the some important things which are mainly present in this memorandum of understanding and next topic it is about rhino population up by 200 in kaziranga so actually i think four days ago we discussed about this rhino okay rhino census in kaziranga national park and now the report of that study which is mainly given and this is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 so if you see context it mainly says that the population of this greater one horned rhinoceros in kaziranga national park and tiger reserve so they had been increased by 200 in 4 years in last 4 years there is increasing of this number of this one horned rhinoceros that is seen in this kaziranga national park according to this recent census so if we are talking about the data so rhino latest rhino census conducted in this 2018 which mainly said that the number was uh, like 2413 and now it is uh, 613 rhinos and it mainly says that there is a there is increasing of uh, rhinos that is mainly seen here and during this period actually kaziranga which mainly lost 400 rhinos because of some natural causes because uh, during monsoon season there is increasing of rainfall that is seen in this northeastern region and there are number of rivers that are present and there is a increased chances of flooding in this kaziranga national park and even what happened there is also threat from the poachers as well okay so if you're talking about where is kaziranga national park located so this is our assam okay so this is our assam so here we can see this is our kaziranga national park so we're talking about habitat of this uh, one horned rhinoceros so here they mainly live in india nepal terai region and northern western bengal and assam region so actually in india rhinoceros are mainly seen in assam west bengal and uttar pradesh and in assam especially there are four protected areas they are probitiora wildlife sanctuary and rajiv gandhi orang national park kaziranga national park and as well as manas national park and especially in this kaziranga national park we are having like 2400 uh, rhinoceros and now this number which mainly increased to 2600 rhinoceros and if we talk about protection status they are mainly listed in vulnerable in icn red list and they are mainly protected under this appendix 1 and they are listed under schedule 1 of wildlife protection act of 1972 so if you are talking about what are the threats they are having threats from poachers especially for the poachers they want the horns of this rhinoceros and habitat loss population density and decreasing of genetic diversity so if you are talking about what are the conservation efforts we are taking for this uh, 
I uh, for this uh, one horned rhinoceros. So yes, government of India which is mainly taking much conservation result, uh, conservation measures. The first one here is if you are talking about this uh, five rhino nations, rhino range nations like India, Bhutan, Nepal, Indonesia, and Malaysia, they mainly came up with the declaration. That declaration is called as the Delhi Declaration on Asian Rhinos. Okay, and they are mainly focusing on conservation as well as protection of the species. And recently, Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change, which mainly became the project, okay, and they started creating these DNA profiles of all rhinos in the country. And we also came up with this uh, National Rhino Conservation Strategy, and actually this strategy, which mainly launched in year two thousand nineteen, to conserve Great One Horned Rhinoceros. And we also came up with this Indian Rhino Vision twenty twenty. Actually, this mainly launched in year two thousand five. And it is one of the ambitious effort to attain wild population of at least three thousand greater one horned rhinoceros. Okay, so this is about this topic, and now let's try to see next topic. Title says thirty-four outsiders brought land in Jammu and Kashmir. So we are talking about this Jammu and Kashmir. Earlier we used to have Article thirty-five and Article three seventy of Indian Constitution, which mainly talks about special category status for this Jammu and Kashmir. And this article, which mainly says that outsiders cannot buy the land in Jammu and Kashmir, but in 2019, on August 5th and 6th, the government came up with revocation of these two articles. So because of this, now any outsider they can buy land in Jammu and Kashmir. So this is about the some beef background, and actually this article is important from your quality point of view, which mainly comes under your GS paper too. So now let us try to see context. So, if you see context, it mainly says that as many as thirty-four persons from outside Jammu and Kashmir, they have purchased properties in the newly created Union Territory. So, after this Jammu and Kashmir Reorganisation Act of two thousand nineteen, so as well Jammu and Kashmir State, which is mainly divided into two Union Territories, right? So, after creation of this Union Territories, and also after this dilution of this Article three hundred seventy. Of Indian Constitution, so now about thirty-four persons they purchase a land, okay, in this Jammu and Kashmir who are outside of this Jammu and Kashmir. So if you see some details, it mainly says that as per information which is mainly provided by this government of Jammu and Kashmir, thirty-four persons outside this Union territory they mainly bought the properties in this Union territory. So in this context, Ministry of Home Affairs, which mainly informed this Rajya Sabha that there are seven plots of land. And these lands they have been purchased by the persons who are outside of this Jammu and Kashmir division. And in 2021, Ministry of Home Affairs informed this parliamentary panel that land which is mainly being protected for agriculturist of Jammu and Kashmir in the same lands how agriculture which is mainly protected in the states of Uttarakhand and as well as Himachal Pradesh. So if we are talking about background of this topic, so you need to know background. So if you know background, then only you can appreciate what is happening, right? So actually, center which mainly notified Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir reorganization, adaptation of center laws, third order, twenty twenty. So according to this order, now it will allows the people who are outside of this Jammu and Kashmir, they can now buy the land in Jammu and Kashmir without being a domicile of that Jammu and Kashmir. So if we are talking about features of this bill, it mainly says that so no domicile or permanent resident certificate which is required now. to purchase this non agriculture land in this union territory and people as well as investors who are from outside of this jammu and kashmir they can now purchase the land in this union territory and next one is so it also amended jammu and kashmir land revenue act of 1996 so under which agriculturist of jammu and kashmir they can purchase agriculture land okay and now there is no bar on agriculture land that can be used for even non agriculture purposes as well so for this we need to take permission from this district collector and the center also notified real estate regulation and development act of 2016 so this mainly paved a way for acquisition of land in jammu and kashmir by all indian citizens and if you see previously the article 35a of indian constitution uh, of the jammu and kashmir constitution which mainly pro which mainly places a prohibition regarding sales of land to those who are not the state subjects but now it is mainly diluted Okay, so the big land estate abolition act of nineteen fifty, which meant abolished. Okay, and 
here what happened now any person who is not even domicile of jammu and kashmir they can go and they can buy the land in jammu and kashmir so this is about this topic and now let us try to see yesterday's question that is mopla revolt so during mopla revolt okay uh, it is against peasants peasants were directed against landlords only so here the extreme word here is only but it is against landlords and even government so you can eliminate this statement so revolt acquired communal color and thus resulted in the isolation from khilafat non cooperation movement yes this is absolutely correct so correct option is two only and today's questions of the first one here is i gave some important events and you have to match with the leaders and next question is regarding mesolithic stage and neolithic stage so what are the characteristics of this mesolithic stage so this is also very important from your history okay so these are the two questions so try to give the answers for these questions so before saying this today's newspaper pdf let me make a small announcement on this platform we in rathod science we are ready to launch this mains answer writing practice course and this course it is for one year and we will be giving you weekly targets that means of which are the subjects that you have to study and we will be giving you detail micro listing of topics and after that daily one question will be given you based on that target you are supposed to write the answer and you have to send that answer to our email id so that there will be evaluation and we provide you one to one mentorship okay and we also provide you model answer so in this way within one year i will assure you that you are going to complete each and every topic of your gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 along with essays and case studies so this course it is absolutely beneficial try to join this course so here new batch is going to be start from 4th april so please try to join this course as soon as possible so apart from that we are also launching this pen drive courses for this foundational course of 2023 and this will be beneficial for beginners and even the students who already gave their attempts because you need to follow the trends of upsc so upsc it is not only asking this facts based question now it is started asking some analysis based questions so to answer those questions you need to follow the topics and you need to have a concept clarity that we are focusing in this courses So, if you have any doubts regarding these courses, you can call me on this number eight zero seven four seven six double five one three. Okay, and if you want to watch the demo videos, you can uh, go to our website Radhus Ice Academy, and there you can watch the three demo videos for free of cost. And now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. Yes, this is the today's newspaper PDF. The date here is uh, March thirty, twenty twenty two, and this is Delhi edition, right? so first topic i discussed regarding this uh, sri lanka that is a uh, indian power projects to replace chinese ventures in sri lanka and there is one article that is important regarding this assam and meghalaya actually in this north eastern states there will be the like border issues so here assam and meghalaya they mainly partly resolved 50 year old border dispute in six of the 12 sectors along this boundary of assam and meghalaya so you have to refer that topic once and leave the city page and if you see in the states page i discuss this rhino census and here you have to again revise this mulla periya dam where it is located on along which river okay so what is the tussle between this tamil nadu and kerala you have to know that issue and if you move further in this editorial page most of the articles are not much relevant i discuss this bimstick topic and i also discuss this uh, criminal justice reforms and there is one article regarding this rural line project so already we discussed this topic number of times so you can revise that topic okay i think there is no need of explanation for that topic and in the text and context i discussed about this myanmar issue and there is one article regarding this facebook and fake news how this fake news which is mainly spreading rapidly in the social media websites you have to know that and you can easily understand this topic So, if you see what happened, this article which is mainly talking about political role of Facebook and other internet giants. Okay, so these are mainly leading to increasing of uh, or spreading of this fake news. And in 2016, what happened? Facebook algorithm which gave more weight to friends and family. Okay, and if someone on your friends list which mainly liked or commented on the post, and there is a chance of for you seeing that post were very much higher. so because of this what happened there is rapid uh, sharing of information that is happening here so that is the thing which mainly given so you can easily understand this topic 
and if you see here i discussed uh, about this bimstick so here the start title says that india seeks more uh, seeks closer bimstick partnership okay so already there are number of articles which are coming regarding this bimstick so once the summit is done so we will be getting exact uh, information regarding what is the thing which mainly discussed there and i discussed about this uh, land in jammu and kashmir and here you need to know about promote awareness of social welfare schemes our prime minister tells mps so whatever the programs which are coming up by our mps people need to aware here such that they will they can reap the benefits of that schemes so that is the idea behind that so apart from that here you can see fire breaks out sarsika tiger reserve okay so it is mainly regarding this forest fire so here this article is important from disaster management you can refer about what can be the measures that can be taken to control this forest fires and here you need to know where is the sarsika tiger reserve is located okay and if you move further you can see sri lanka which is mainly faces shortage of medicines so actually you know that sri lanka which is mainly uh, mainly facing this severe economic crisis so even it is mainly facing some surgical uh, equipments shortage and some essential medicines okay and even if you see there is one more article which is mainly talking about sri lanka's media clarification reveals recent defense pact with india so you can easily go to that topic and icra icra is one of the credit rating agency which mainly cuts its financial year 2023 growth forecast to 7.2 percentage okay so there is further further decreasing of our economic growth forecast because of this ukrainian war and because of increasing of oil cry oil cost so this is also in regarding this oil price and this article which is mainly talking about sunflower oil so actually we are getting this sunflower oil from ukraine now india which mainly buy, buys this russian sunflower oil at a record price okay so this is about sunflower oil so these are the some important articles that appeared in this today's newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathore's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much